Hey guys, Steve Gallia from Algonquin Fly Tying Supply. Um, we're going to do a video on uh, uh, tying a uh, green weenie. A uh, green weenie is a, uh, a nymph uh, pattern that imitates a Rycophilia nymph, um, which is a rock, a rock worm, a rock, rock uh, nymph type of thing. It's a uh, net builder, fairly common in our streams. It's a very effective uh, nymph, and we're going to give it a go um, right now for this video. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, put in a, uh, a curved uh, nymph hook. Um, this one's in size 10 um, for the purposes of this video. Often you'll, times you'll uh, tie them a lot smaller than that, 12, 14, even 16. But for the purposes of this video, uh, 12 will be fine. Um, it's already pre-weighted, which is something uh, I did just to save time on the video. But um, it's also a good, good practice when you're fishing. You want to get these things down deep, quick, quick as you can. So uh, materials, I'm going to use a six odd, six odd uh, thread in green. You can use black or whatever other color you prefer. Tan is also nice. You know, eat anything you want. I'm also going to use this uh, a, um, a UT, uh, U, uh, UTC uh, wire, ultra wire, and I've got it in a uh, a uh, chartreuse, fluorescent chartreuse. It's going to be good for the segmentation and to add a little bit of weight to the fly. Uh, I'll be using this dubbing here because. That's a color that uh, works well around here, and uh, you know I prefer it. And um, and we're going and that's gonna the dubbing is also gonna be used for essentially the back end of the nymph, uh, the pupa, the body, and all that. And we've got ostrich hurl here to make the thorax. So here's here's how it goes. And I'm gonna try to work um, as as well as I can. I'm really close to the camera, and um, so I'll, I'll go go slowly, just so I don't bump that camera. But first. As always, you lay down a base of thread. And you take it right from uh, behind the eye, um, right to where, where the uh, lead ends. And you're doing this, um, of course, first to hold down the lead, make sure it's nice and sec secure, but also just to lay down a base like you would for any other, re any other fly, and that is so things uh, attach better to the base rather than the smoothness of the hook. So uh, I think I've got a decent base there. What I'll do now is uh, get my scissors and I'll get this tag end of uh, thread off. I'll, ad I'll advance um, this thread to the middle. I will get a, um, a bit of uh, this uh, UTC wire. I'm going to get about uh, four inches for a fly this size, which is, was, which is plenty. You want to have plenty rather than too little. And I'm going to use an old uh, beat up pair of scissors. The kind I always use for my wire. I never use my fine scissors on wire. So the next thing you do with this uh, with this um, wire is you uh, lash it to the top of the hook. So I like it about two or three um, uh, eyes back. I'll start in the center here and uh, of the back of the hook, and I'll uh, um, very very gently uh, lash it in so it's going to uh, follow the. Uh, the spine of the hook. And this will come in handy for the uh, for the ribbing and the segmentation. That's done. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, add the dubbing. So the first thing I'll do is I've got this wax here, this dubbing wax, that I'm going to draw across the thread to make that uh, thread nice and tacky. And then I'm going to get um, some dubbing out of this package here. And uh, anyone that's tied flies before knows the uh, if you're going to dub this way rather than a dubbing loop, um, the basic um, principle of dubbing is try to keep it sparse. I'm also going to go a um, uh, little bit at a time where because there's just not a lot of room here, so I don't want a, a long thread. So this may take a couple of uh, times of loading up uh, the bobbin here with dubbing. It's sparse. Now you'll see how um, that is a really ragged uh, a bit of dubbing. Um, that's not something I'm going to worry about because once I uh, counterwind uh, that um, that wire, it's going to tame a lot of it. And um, you know, uh, after that, I can always trim it down as well. So that almost got me where I wanted to go. Should probably uh, spin that a little bit more. 
kind of back up here just a bit because uh, things got a little out of control while I was trying to avoid the camera. Here it is. Okay, so again, so yeah, you bring her up there. There's a bump of the camera, but that's about where I want the dubbing to end. So I'm gonna throw a half hitch in there. I'm also gonna kind of peel it back a ways and uh, maybe a uh, couple of spins of wire over that. Yeah, that camera <laughs> camera got a little uh, too close, but uh, let's get that back to where it belongs, right about there. All right, so now we've got that, I'm gonna bring my uh, bobbin cradle around, get my bobbin out of the way, and I am gonna counter wrap as promised with the uh, wire. And uh, what, what I'm trying to do here is uh, create uh, segmentation and also, um, again, weight, but also add some durability to the fly. So there's a, a lot of things going on. There's, a, there's a, a huge, you know, a lot of purpose for the, this wire, actually. Um, and the color is, doesn't hurt either. Um, I'm going to try and make those segments as even as I can, getting a little bit wider apart as it goes up the hook. Again, take it to a little bit beyond where I want it, which is right there. I'm going to... Uh, Get my uh, get my thread, and I'm going to wrap uh, back to that point and secure the wire, which will be right there. Uh, again, the camera is kind of kind of making it a little difficult here, but okay. So there is the wire secured. Um, normally, I would probably use a helicopter method and clipping that wire off that but because of the tight quarters I'm just going to take these uh, uh, utility scissors and clip it off and then I'm going to advance uh, my thread backwards to where I want to start the thorax with the ostrichrel once I'm there uh, which is at this spot I'm going to lay in a half hitch just to keep things under control then I will get myself uh, two ostrich hurls uh, work very well on a fly this size. Here they are. Again, it's probably excessive, but better to have more than less. So uh, I got them here. Even out the ends, I am going to uh, slowly lash it on. When I'm sure that's nice and secure, I'm going to uh, half hitch. Then I'm going to advance uh, that thread to where I want it, which is about an eye width back from the from the uh, eye of the hook and now bring that bobbin around again and uh, twist uh, the two hurls together so I can wind them as one and then slowly but surely I'm going to wrap them I think about three or four wraps is probably plenty on this uh, fly there's my fourth one and I'll just do that fifth one I'll lose uh, my bobbin cradle gonna hold that up gonna shorten the, the lead on this and uh, slowly again this is a tricky part with a camera in the way bring it around and I'll do that one more time around the back of that ostrich hurl and then I'll go around the front, tie a bit of a head there, get my small scissors, clip off the hurl, and uh, now that I've got the head, I'm going to get my uh, whip finishing tool, and we're going to do a quick uh, whip finish around there. One, two, three, four, staying away from the eye of the hook and closing it up. So that's done. That's the fly in essence right there. We're going to uh, clip that and now it's time to give it just a bit of a haircut. Um, where you uh, just, uh, there's a lot of, these things should be a bit uh, shaggy and, and scraggly but not too much. You want to kind of also present a, uh, a slim profile. Um, we're getting there with this. I think what I'll do is once I get this uh, off the vise, I'll trim it up just a bit more. Typically, because this is a rotary vise, I would just spin it around and, um, you know, have a 
a uh, real good trim on it, give it a really good haircut, but but again, the camera's close and there's not a lot of room to use that rotary feature, but uh, that's it right there. There's our, uh, our rock worm. Uh, it could be a little neatened up just a little bit more by just a couple of minutes with the scissors, but that will catch fish all day long if you take it to the right spot and use it in the right way. Um, that's the video. Thanks very much. Uh, this is Steve from Algonquin Fly Tying Supply. Uh, please visit our website at algonquinflytying.com. Take care.